Well, I spent uh, a little time amongst the chuds last week, and I Ooh. made Ooh. some some scientific observations uh, mm. that I wanted to report back with. Amongst the chuds, a memoir. <laughs> no, so for the first time in my life, uh, last week, I was at a gun range, um, which, as you can probably imagine, is like 98% chud. Uh, yeah, and like totally. the hardcore, like dudes who wear camo all the time kind of chuds um the real deal chuds uh are out here so i don't know i had never been to a gun range did not know that this is how it works but at least at the one i imagine this is how they work at all of them the one that i was at you like shoot there's like a field out in front of you right and you can like set up targets to shoot at you shoot at them for like 15 minutes and then they're like okay everybody finish up what you have in the magazines and then there's a line like behind where you shoot at that you have to step behind so you have to so you, you have to like empty your gun you have to have it facing down range step behind this line you are not allowed to handle firearms while this is happening because this is when people are going out and changing the targets out and they're like out in the area where you're shooting in right, right so they're very right. very strict about don't even fuck around like you know we'll let you know when you can go back across this line and like load your gun up again so like the chuds follow these rules to a T and like, there's, there's like, there's like these range, they call them range masters. Right. And these fucking dudes who will get up in your shit and yell at you, like who come by and make sure that like everybody's gun is pointed down range and empty with like, like drill a little, sergeant. Bullshit. Yeah. Like in, yeah. They, they make you put a little flag in the chamber. So it's like visibly empty from a distance. Right. Safety they have first. like all of these safety regulations and yet, in like the chudliest chud den of all time, not a one of these guys is like complaining about like my liberty or like my freedom. Like these guys, the, the range masters are like, here's what we need for in order for everybody to be safe. So you have to do all these things. And the chuds and are they like- they fall in line. And right. the chuds are like, okay, cool. Sounds good. And then like guys will yell at them for it. And instead of fighting them, they'll be like, Oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. Yes, I'll, sir, I'll no, do sir. that. Yeah, exactly. So, so I guess my scientific hy hypothesis is that like, it's not that the chuds are incapable of doing things only for like, to, only to protect the safety of the people around them. It's just that somehow like guns have to be involved, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if Gavin comes out with like an AR-10, yeah, that's, that's going to change. Yeah, if mind. we could find some way to tie like gigantic guns in with mask regulation, right? Dude, these guys from Orange County would be all over it within seconds. I've never, I've never seen um, a group of people be so compliant, especially a group of people who are holding like ARs. It's incredible. That's so funny. I yeah. love it. I mean, it totally makes sense. These are, I, I think, far right people sort of have a hierarchical mindset. Uh, and so they view this, whatever he's called, the Chud leader as their leader for the day, right? The Chud leader. Right. I believe that's right. It's the technical term. Yes. Right, right, right. Um, whereas we on the left, very leaderless movement, we sort of bonk into each other and, and don't like to do what we're told. It's, it's hurting cats, right? <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but man i'll tell you you got to get in line if you go to the gun range man you got to do what they want and and yeah. all and and the chuds are happy to comply it's, it's wild i've never seen people be so compliant i've never done wow. a gun range before um and i feel like i'd have to like prep correctly for it like dress correctly yeah Demo. you definitely don't want your like your commies t-shirt yeah like your hammer and sickle tattoos showing when you go yeah. out to the gun range for sure all those okay. hammer and sickles you got tattooed all over yourself Kemp. <laughs> yeah i'll wear a shirt I, they won't see my pack all right yeah. all right well i mean we're getting there we're getting just in time for the holidays we figured out sort of maybe we have an inroad on how to get chuds to wear masks and be cool I think that's, that's tight. I, I like it. Yeah. You can't yeah. shoot your gun if you don't wear a mask. There you it can't is. Shoot your gun. There it fucking is. All right. All Great. Right. 
All right, we Newsom, fixed it. You're welcome. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're welcome, right. world. Now that we fixed that, uh, let's do the show. On to the next problem. Okay. Voices. The things they said. Voices. Some from those days. All the voices heard. Voices. The things we say. Voices. They're in your head. All the voices heard. Hello, everyone. We have Kempa. And we have Skylar. And we have Shannon. No flow today. Um, flow. We had a uh, a little in person, socially distanced voices IRL meetup yesterday, and Flow drank like a hundred white claws. So yeah, yeah. Flow's probably not going to be okay to do anything until Wednesday at the earliest. Is my then, guess. Then she walked three miles home too. Yeah, ridiculous. That's not true, everyone. She is. Uh, <laughs> she's actually being a good. Uh, civil servant and she is running the measure you commission tonight so uh, i'm sure flo feels fine i don't even think she had a white claw at our meeting um that was a fun meeting i love the picture that came out of it it looks a little we look like a christian rock band yeah we do it rules there it's funny because flo today shared a photo of like two of us and two other friends at a Kings game four years ago. And we all look like really fresh faced and young. And I have like a short haircut and we're all smiling bright. And then like, there's that picture from our meetup yesterday that looks like sort of dark, like post-apocalyptic. And it's, <laughs> it fits the meme very well of how it started, how it's going. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but I, that was just a lot of fun and I'm glad we, glad we had that meeting. Yes. Yeah. Take care, take care of biz every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I do it. And it like makes this feel, I mean, it obviously feels real, but you know, you're not just little uh, cartoons created by the CIA <laughs> <laughs> that I'm speaking to, giving all my leftist secrets to. So, well, I mean, they do have the hologram technology. That's true uh, too. So but, enough, don't take anything for, for granted, I guess. That's true. I, it could have been a hologram that drove me over there. So, <laughs> Or did hologram. you ever really leave your apartment? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, shit. Wow. Oh. Red pilled or whatever the pill colors are. I don't know. Yeah, no, not that one. Black pilled. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black pilled. That's the one. Yeah. So let's get started <laughs> with the news of the day. Um, Shannon. Mm. As an expert on our mm. show on the homelessness crisis, um, and as the director of Mary House, which for folks who don't know is a daytime drop-in shelter for women experiencing emergency homeless situations. Uh, it's really a frontline service provider. Uh, it helps out kids, a couple dads on occasion too, right? Um, and so Shannon is really our expert um, you've worked in homeless services for, for how long now? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> for like 15 years. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I mean, obviously you had a whole thing where you just had your gallbladder taken out, but sure did. you're back in the mix. You're catching up on things. Um, and we thought it would be uh, good for the show, especially as the pandemic is, is coming back to a spike. Uh, things are getting more and more dangerous out there. Uh, there are some things happening regarding, um, you know, the initial effort that we had to, to get people under roofs during this pandemic. So could you talk to us? Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the the bear cut drive hole? From yeah. Farrah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds dope. I mean, it sounds like where we should start. Um, yeah, so the story in terms of the timeline, I guess I'm I'm not really prepared with that, but there was so there was some funding secured through Project Home Key, which let's 
get familiar with Project Home Key. There's Project Room Key and there's right. Project, Project Home Key. This has been um, very confusing to me trying to read up on these incidents and trying to keep that straight. Yeah, Newsom, if you need a messaging guy, just fucking call yeah. me because that's yeah, it's it's really nightmare. bad. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can I understand why they chose that language because they thought it would be super clear, but it's it's like clear as mud, really, for people who don't understand homeless services. Um, so Project Room Key is is just giving a person a room. It's essentially, it's like a motel room. Um, it's it's temporary shelter through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Project Home Key um, is, giving is, a home. is giving someone a home. Yes. I had not put that together. Thank you. That makes way more sense. Now. <laughs> that immediately clears up a lot of my questions. I have been doing this for 15 years. From <laughs> I feel very dumb because that is very simple now. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it certainly, yeah. I mean, it is simple, but it takes, it just takes a minute for someone to like break it down for a second. Right. Like if yeah. you're not familiar with all this stuff, you're going to read it and be like, what the fuck is room key and home key and what mm -hmm. it can really, it can easily get. And the uh, transition from easy. shelter to housing is a real thing that, right. that I think if you're not in on the game, uh, it, you it's don't know the intricacies there. Totally. Um, so a little bit of background on project home key, uh, state statewide project home key is a $600 million state grant um which is to be used to purchase hotels motels vacant like retirement home or convalescent um uh spaces and the money is used to convert those spaces into housing 550 million dollars of that 600 million dollar grant um is covid relief money and so there's a deadline to spend that which arrives december 30th 2020 50 million of that is state general fund um you've got to spend it by june 30th of 2022 okay so uh, city of Sacramento applies for this money. They get the money. Because Daryl is the homelessness czar of California. Because he is the czar. Mm -hmm. He's the czar and he's buds with Newsome. And, mm -hmm. you know, he... Ah! Yep. Mm -hmm. ah! Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so they secure this Project Home Key funding. And it is decided that the, the Sacramento, we... The city of Sacramento wants to purchase the Hawthorne Suites, which is a hotel slash motel, more like a hotel, located in the River District, um, just off of Richards, like back behind the Denny's and the Chevron. Yeah, it's, it's, it's where that like restaurant used to be. The, the Rusty the, Duck. The Rusty Duck. I yeah. loved that building. I don't think I even lived here when it was open, but it's it was a beautiful building that they just tore down for this project we're going to be talking about. But it's it's on a street called Bear Cut, which does a little circle just mm -hmm. north of, of Richards that is right next to, um, it's really close to the confluence of the rivers, right? Uh, yeah. I guess it's next to the American River. Yep. Um, so the goal there was to take the Hawthorne Suites and turn it into a hundred unit housing project for people experiencing homelessness. Um, now, of course, the announcement of this whole project really ruffles some feathers. And you might imagine that it would be developers, uh, specifically a developer with 500 Beer Cut LLC and an organization representing businesses in the area called the River District. Um, so they end up deciding to file a couple lawsuits. Um, the River District is like, yo, this is gonna fuck with our plans to, you know, like our businesses are just gonna be fucked. They're not gonna be able to make any money. We don't wanna be like, homeless central basically 
Um, we don't want to have to clean up. There's a quote in in the article that Teresa Clift was a Sacramento Bee wrote, uh, which talks about like Sacramento T. Yeah, Sacramento T. Uh, having to clean up human excrement and what is that like? How are we supposed to run a business if that's what we have to do? Which is absurd because it's bullshit. You, the people are under a roof and they have a toilet, so that reduces. People right. technically themselves. These people are actually, in fact, not unhoused. They are temporarily housed, which takes care of the excrement on the street issue. Right. right. When you have a, oh my God. I mean, th this is over and over, these right wing business types uh, use this sort of language. And it's just patently absurd. It goes, it flies in the face of logic. No, oh, totally. Um, so then we have the developer side, which is always like the most special, right? Like the river district, I've got tons, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of history there in terms of like their relationship with um, folks experiencing homelessness and they're just like constant sort of like stigmatized, perpetuating really the negatives around people experiencing homelessness. But, but really there's nothing like, it's just like the same old shit with them. It's, mm -hmm. it's like trying to convince a Trump supporter not to vote for Trump. Right. You it's just not going to happen. You no, just, you just fight them outright. You don't, you totally. don't be logic. You don't try and, and you speak with them you, logically. Logic doesn't work, right? Yeah. Like it just, it's not part of, it's not part of the discussion at all. And so they're trying to build luxury housing over there. <laughs> well, so this is, yeah. So that's like the, the, so the river district in partnership with the developer wants to build this like luxury housing which like anyone who's from sacramento let's just like like thinking about putting like luxury housing like right by the freeway overlooking a denny's hell yeah that's uh, the lap of luxury <laughs> You know, I mean, luxurious. I love me some like 24 hour cafe, like, you know, drunk well, McDonald's right there. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Um, so the developer, Denny's, by I've the way, still doing, you can still get takeout there. I was at a Denny's recently, um, to meet people. Uh, this is not getting less confusing as I go. Anyway, regardless, <laughs> there's a big tent in the parking lot. Who are where you, you can meeting at Denny's? Look, that's not important. Take Shannon, out. let's back to what <laughs> Shannon was talking about. I'd actually like to pause. You know, let's and, let's get rid of let's clear all of our segments today and just talk about <laughs> this. Let's do a deep dive on Skyler and Denny's. This, this is not an important. Was this at 3 a.m.? Was <laughs> Was no, this a Craigslist no. encounter? I just, you know, I just, I was hungry for a moons over my hammy. And, uh... <laughs> like, like we, we all get there. Yeah, oh. you know, I wanted to go get in the Denny's tent and have a little moons over my hammy. Anyway. I love how as important. you were explaining it, you're like, oh God, this doesn't sound, this sounds <laughs> like, oh, fuck. totally right. not above ground. <laughs> really messed this one up, didn't I? Um, yeah. Okay. So then the, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and save, save us from more of that. Um, <laughs> so the developer ends up filing a lawsuit, which claims some real, some real stuff, which is. A 1989. A 1980. Well, so they claim that the city is going back on its vow not to increase services in the river district for people experiencing homelessness. There is a 1989 resolution. And here's what I want to say. I mean, I have a lot to say about all of this, but here's what I want to say about the fucking 1989 resolution. Loaves and Fishes was founded in 1983. So that's like a, that's a, that's not like yesterday. Right. Right. So, and, and in 1989, they signed a resolution. That's like, we're, that's it. We're done. Like the river district is going to do no more. Like we're not going to bring in any more services for people experiencing homelessness. And I, I gotta say loaves and probably other places were certainly growing after 1989 100%. over in that area. So, I mean, I think it's also important to point out that if if the city of Sacramento created 
a more equitable access to services just like widespread let's let's say maybe every council person had like an, a navigation center for people experiencing homelessness right in their community which included some shelter beds some resources um like that might prevent the concentration of people experiencing homelessness going into the river district yeah to go to places like loaves and fishes or you know and any no, i'm not going to name all of the places that are down there but just like but, share but, some of the fucking responsibility yeah exactly and daryl credit where it's due mayor steinberg said okay every single city council member has to find a place to have right. shelter beds and a lot of these council members just dragged their feet and didn't fucking do it. Um, and so I guess to his credit, even when they brought up Steve Ayers is the asshole uh, right. uh, developer, um, made his money in, in I, I believe, like some kind of like steel or some, some kind of metal work. I don't know. That um, sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him. I saw him actually talking with the city about like getting rid of all of their uh, all of the fees they usually pay pay have to uh, you have to pay as a developer he was convincing them to waive all of them uh, this was at naked lounge a couple of years ago and i remember thinking who is this fucking guy and i looked at the license plate and it, it said something to do with some kind of metal so i think that is how he i mean it's these fucking metal Dope. guys yeah Dope. getting a little tangential here but like and this isn't my like hipster coffee shop story that I just made up. Like this actually literally. <laughs> this, this is an actual story that happened to me. Um, um, yeah, keep going. <laughs> I think the other thing about the development is that it it's like billed as luxury, uh, luxury living. And the the development includes only market rate units, which I think is like. You know, I mean, I have a lot of feelings about that, like Sacramento not having an inclusionary housing um, policy, which guarantees that for what that when developments go up, a certain number or percentage of them are affordable, mm -hmm. rather than just like inundating our community with market rate housing that nobody can fucking afford. Yeah, zero um, percent of these units are are affordable. Right, they're all. Um, they're all expensive or mar yeah. market rate is what it's called in the. And as we all know, and uh, you know, after years of arguing over this, more housing doesn't solve the problem. Right. We need more affordable, it's affordable housing. housing. And right. these fucking laissez-faire Republicans that are like, no, let the market do its thing. Nah, man, people just end up- That's out not just Republicans, man. There's plenty of fucking Ds in this city towing that exact right. same fucking line. That's absolutely true. David Townsend's of the Democrats. And there are plenty of Democrats on our city council who believe that as well. Yes. It's super problematic. I mean, I think also this development in particular banks on a pre-COVID economy. And like that that market rate housing that is like overlooks the rail yards and the and the soccer shit and the fucking Kaiser's like I swear to God, if I read one more fucking thing that's like soccer and Kaiser, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. What is it about Kaiser in the rail yards that makes the, I mean, I get, I, here's the thing. I get it. Like housing and healthcare, super tight. Like, I think that they should be close together, but the motherfuckers who are paying for the market rate housing in the luxury, uh, whatever the hell overlooking the Denny's. They don't give a shit where their doctor is. They're just going to drive to fucking Roseville to go see somebody. Yeah. Like it, it's, it, yeah. I mean, the reason that they talk up these, you know, hospitals, these Kaisers and whatever, every time there's a new development, it's because that's one of the like two or three quote unquote industries that this town has. So right, they always sure. have to talk them up. I mean, we've got that, we've got government and we've got, bars and restaurants and that's why right. we're going to be hit harder than most other cities on this shit right that's another story yeah. um but okay so 
they filed these two lawsuits. Um, but again, to Daryl's credit, he said, you know what? We're going to fucking fight this. We're going to get this done no matter what. But then this other thing happened, right? What happened? Yeah. So, uh, so it like the whole shit goes through and they end up getting the Hawthorne suites appraised. The appraisal comes in for I don't know how many fucking dollars, but it comes in and they're like, cool, sounds like a good amount. Um, and then they have to get it appraised again. So pre-COVID, they got it appraised. They had to get it appraised again during COVID, at which point it appraises at a lower value, but the owner still wants to sell it at the higher value. But there's this rule at the state level that prevents the sale of the Hawthorne Suites at the higher value so the um so the city has to back out of it because this like it because this can't it can't because a hawthorne person refuses to do the lower one because they won't right. sell it at the lower rate yeah so the thing about the like an additional piece of this is that the city had planned to use nine million dollars in cares money to pay for this whole project like start to finish you know get the whole shit ready to go to house folks that nine million dollars has to be spent before the end of the year so that's cares money that has to be spent by december 30th 2020 now it can get reallocated but it's gonna have to go to council to get voted on for reallocation um so this getting, all hap has to happen fast really fast and getting it to this point wasn't necessarily the easiest thing because we had um uh harris and warren voted against this project and Carr abstained from the vote mm -hmm. so it's not it's not necessarily like a gimme yeah it's not like let's just let's just do a different like project for people experiencing homelessness it's not like it's going to happen they can't put it on the agenda for tomorrow yeah and come to a decision super super quick um I, I i suspect so i don't think we can talk on this topic as uh, uh, on everything that we wanted to today but I, I forwarded you i believe both of you a press release from newsom's office mm -hmm. saying that they do have they're about to immediately direct 62 million dollars in one-time funds uh, for what is still resist it, still existing of the Project Room Key program. So that's, I guess, somewhat of a good thing, right? But like certain Project Room Key places have already shut down. People are already in right. the streets. Yeah, I mean, so this is, it's, you know, like credit where credit's due in terms of having, making the money available for sure. But I think it is a little late in the game for it. Like in Sacramento, we have had, those uh one of the hotels has closed and people are have have started to transition out from it like they've had you know because the funding was ending so it's like we we can't keep you here indefinitely we got to start transitioning people out back onto the streets in many cases because again because of the lack of affordable housing um can this money potentially like help with the sites that are still open like sure i mean i don't i don't know this this was uh as of today was announced that this money is released so i suspect it has to you have to apply for it like our community will probably have to apply for it i'm sorry i didn't get a chance to look over that email that you sent um, oh that's fine i i don't it says the local government's implementing project room key uh, I don't think I can read this off the top of my head and find what's really matters. It's a long ass. Press well, there's six, I mean, there's $62 million for the whole state. Right. Uh, 24 million of it uh, is supposed to go to support continued project room key operations while local communities develop rehousing plans. So no one is forced to leave a project room key unit and become unsheltered. 
uh, uh, 35, 35 million of it is to develop and implement plans to transition individuals from Project Roomkey into permanent housing. This money can be used for rental subsidies, case management, how to, uh, the housing navigation and landlord incentives, among other things. That's fucking gross. And so I think, and then like the final 3 million is just technical assistance, but I, I think I know where Shannon's about to go with this, um, which is I'm being fine, but where is this transition? We don't have the fucking housing right now. We don't have the these affordable housing spots that we can transition people into well yeah i mean i think that's a really important point i think the other important point is to remember historically in this community in, in the city of sacramento in the county of sacramento we have not proven that transitioning that that this community does well moving people from shelter into permanent supportive housing and creating spaces where they where folks can can become um self-sustaining essentially mm -hmm. right like and and why is that it's because we don't have you know employment there's no fucking living wage finding a job that pays people enough to to afford their housing is one thing people who have medical bills that are out of control or are living with you know pre-existing conditions and come into this housing with medical bills. You've got people who come into housing with mental health diagnoses who require more supportive services than, you know, another person. There's any number of issues that need to be addressed. And we can't just simply say, we're going to put someone in a motel because of pandemic. And now we have $65 million to help transition someone into a home and and all of a sudden everything's fixed like Voila. our community our community doesn't even have a bank of housing navigators to pull from right now like the community that once had over a dozen navigators through Sacramento steps forward working to help get people connected as far as i know now has less than 5 navigators like and it's difficult you know, to navigate that which is why they have that fucking name to navigate these systems, these programs, these services. And if you're somebody who's experiencing the trauma of homelessness, it really helps to have a professional right there next to you, holding your hand through it and saying, okay, here's what you need. Now let's go do this. Now let's go do that. That's right. literally what you need to do. And yeah, so as you're saying, we don't even have that full team anymore. Um, and then I, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, and we talk about this a lot in the recent weeks, but our priorities are shown in our funding structure and yeah. where our county and city puts its money. And most of that money goes to the coercive arm of the government, to our cops, to the police, right. to the sheriff's department, so they can just continue to harass the homeless right. community. As opposed to, as you know, the things that flow and the rest of the folks in the public health sphere advocate for, to the programs that could actually help people, actually get them into housing, actually fund these navigators that are so dearly needed right now. Right. Um, and and again, I don't think we have too much time to talk more on this, but you know, we we're seeing stories over in West Sac of people in a trailer park possibly be being evicted. Um, and we're seeing other stories of the city, especially Jeff Harris, a council member who has historically been a little bit nicer on homelessness issues than some other members, but I wouldn't call him perfect by any means. He's mm -hmm. amping up his rhetoric against like, well, you know, if homeless people are over here, then uh, that that could just like bring the city to its knees. Well, and it's not so. So I read that that CBS article, or is that CBS where they where they quote him on that? Yeah, I think so. um, yeah. And like, like you know, they in the article they they point it's like the fire department got called, and there's like a drainage tunnel that somebody lit a fire in, um, and that like in the in the you know they're talking about like this could be a big this could knock out the whole 
um what the what the power grid or like there's like thing you know or people like that was the thing with the they were talking about in city council uh last year where it was like oh we can't let uh homeless people camp too close to levees because they carve them out and right. then the levees integrity is compromised and now it's a flood problem mm -hmm. which Wait, is Tameka like i talk about that on the show right under the show to make which like yeah. obviously like yeah like you don't want people lighting fires in places that are like for where it's dangerous for fires to be but like the answer isn't to like oh we gotta move them somewhere else it's like well why don't like we have housing like get them into fucking housing if you don't like dude yeah they're lighting like people are going into drainage tunnels and lighting fires because it's cold outside and it's raining right. like what the and fuck what do you think people housing, are gonna do even if we don't have housing, tell them where they can go. Don't right. just shuffle people around right. all day. Exactly. It's not, yeah, the, the onus is not on these people to figure it out. Like it is on us as a community to like meet their needs. Like their basic, basic human needs, like fucking shelter and access to like food. And then all of a sudden, all of these problems that fucking Harris is on CBS talking about how it's going to bring the cities to its knees are solved. Like that goes away. It's, it's fucking that easy and it's prevent, like the thing, like, I'm glad you brought up the cops because the, it's the same kind of deal with the cops where it's like, no, 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 you can get out in front of these things with preventative measures. You don't need to wait until bad shit happens and then bring in the guys who punish people. That's not necessary if you can, if you can do a little bit of prevention in the first place, you know, to, so to see somebody who's like responsible for making decisions in his district be wringing his hands about like, oh no, like, you know unhoused folks are gonna make a like create a flood hazard or whatever it's like dude you have the power to get a lot of these people inside and then the that and then that him. and then that fucking that that solves your problem like right there you know well it's a, it's also it's one of these things where like so harris is a case study in someone who like oversees a district that he would say is just like there are just so many he would say homeless people that are just they're everywhere and yeah they're gonna bring this city to its knees and we gotta you know we gotta get them out of the river district and the whole narrative is like they are the problem and what and it's it's this like study in people who like can't even like activate their own like sort of self-preservation where it's like do you want less calls about shit do you want like do you want your job to be a little bit easier then fucking create some goddamn social services so that people have access to what they need so that you don't get reports of them sleeping out in front of businesses and you know and whatever and that benefits in the end like i don't think that should be your motivation by any means but if that's the fucking shit you need like if that is your motivation i'll take it Right. But he can't yeah. like he can't even he can't even do that instead any of uh, any folks especially on the dais who are like whoever spout anything that's anti-homeless it's all like the responsibility is on them to like pick themselves up by their bootstraps and figure it out rather than just like looking at this city doing a fucking needs assessment Right. And then implementing some goddamn change. But, but that's hard. Be... That's a difficult thing to do. And that requires like a lot of nuance and a lot of understanding and sacrifice. And it is easier for these guys to instead talk about like how many feet apart the signs on the levee that say you can't put your tent here should go. Because that's right. in, in the end, that is the solution that they come up with, right? Or it, to put some park, it, no parking signs up in the right. river district. Right. It, it requires them to go against the people who funded their campaigns for the decades plus that yeah, they've been that's in city council. Point. And so thank God that we have Katie and Mai in right now because they can change the narrative. Um, and also just... They should be, I mean, my final note, and, and like, let's all just take ours uh, at this point, is that they should be thankful. They should be thankful for the defund the police movement and conversation. Because, because this is where you get the money from it. That has to happen. Yeah, yeah, that's where you get the money. The money's right there. You are overfunding the police. It is a, just a bloated like horse at the side of the road for the city that 
you don't need and we can actually start helping people if we redirect that to programs that will actually help people. I saw some, uh, did we talk about this on the last show? I can't remember. I saw some, somebody put this really, really well, I think on Twitter. It was something along the lines of like, if, if we don't defund the police, the police will defund yeah. us. Yeah, right? exactly. Right, And that's what's happening. If the police take all of the fucking money that we can use to do this stuff, then we are being defunded by the police. Yeah. yeah. I Sharon? think this is a good, um, this is another story that's a really good motivator for like reminding folks to go back and look into how much money came into your community through CARES, figure out where it was spent and consider where it needed to be spent and figure out whether or not those two things match. I suspect that they don't. And then like your action from that is reaching out to your local elected and letting them know that you see them and you're not going to fucking put up with it and staying on top of that, especially now, like we are, we are so activated in this like, like righteous ass rage for our electeds to do shit right. And to take care of people and like, not backing down from that so just like keeping our finger on the pulse of all of that money that's going into the spaces that it fucking shouldn't be we shouldn't be yeah. lining the pockets of sheriffs and cops and it, all that shit i totally agree and i think that's a great uh sort of direction for people to look at uh, if you want to be a part of any of that um the sack People's budget uh, has been phenomenal and sign on with them, pay attention to the work that they're doing and help them keep people's uh, feet to the fire. Um, this is actually a good seg because I think down in LA, uh, one of the most successful things for them too has been the LA people's budget that has moved this conversation forward. Uh, it's not only been that. I mean, it, it goes all the way back to the beginning of Black Lives Matter. You know, L.A. was where that began. Um, but y you guys know me. I'm the sweet summer child of the show. I wanted to talk about a little bit of a silver lining of this year, of this election season, uh, and some some really good news that I think really can can mark the beginning of the end of this reign of terror of our police and prison guards uh, in the state. Um, so LA County, it's, uh, it's a super county, right? It's po possibly the largest in the country. There's about 10 million people there. We're in a state of 40 million, if that tells you anything. Uh, and it is also known to be the county that has the most people incarcerated in it out of any county in the country. Uh, and they have been kind of the centerpiece of the carceral state, right? Um, and this year, during this election, the police went hard in all sorts of different elections and one ballot measure, and they fucking lost every single one. Um, so I just want to read off some of these because I think this is absolutely beautiful. And it, it, again, it marks the beginning of the end for the, these, these two lobbies, you know, the police lobby and the CCPOA, which is the prison guard lobby, that have been third rail in California politics. And that when I would ask people about why aren't we pushing this, they'd say they were afraid to because, you know, you don't want the police or right. the prison guards on your ass. So look at this. L.A. County District Attorney race, George Gascon comes down from the Bay Area. Um, you know, when it's a progressive, we love a carpetbagger. Uh, he beat Jackie Lacey, who was this conservative DA incumbent, refused to- uh, A Democrat, notably. A, a Democrat, notably, yes. Uh, refused to press charges against any cop. And again, the county in the state that has killed has more police uh, shootings than any other county, right? Is this this DA sounds familiar to me somehow? I feel mm -hmm. like uh, I know a similar person who who is the DA in this town. 
Yeah, the one in this town is Anne Marie Schubert. Uh, she conveniently changed from Republican to no party preference once people realized that about her. But not even a Democrat. See, at least this lady in L.A. was at least trying to put on a good face. You know, I, you know, you say that, but she was still Anne Marie was still uh, endorsed by outgoing city council member Steve Hansen, as well as that is uh, a giant surprise and a shock. Yeah, as well as there was another one, and both of them got kicked out of the county Democrats for that. So like right. lines are forming, right? The county Democrats are the progs. Our city council is mostly, uh, although not my or or Katie anymore, made up of mods. Anyway, so Jackie Lacey took in five million dollars from the police in her campaign against Gascon. That's seventy two percent of her total. Let's just be like extremely clear about what's happening when the cops give money to the DA and their races. The cops yes. are buying leniency from the, the DA is the person yeah. who's responsible. If cops act up, the DA is the, or, or when I say act up, that's a shitty way to put it. When the cops kill people in kill the streets. Kill with impunity. Yes, exactly. When the cops execute people in the streets, then it's her job to to charge them and like see that justice uh, is served on on these on these criminals uh, just because they are wearing badges makes them no less criminal than anybody else who kills somebody on the street. Um, but so when when DAs run for office, cops throw money at them because that means that when that person is elected to be the DA, that cops can kill with impunity. They know that there will be no charges brought against them because they have paid to uh, get themselves out of being liable, held to the same law that they apply to everybody else. Yeah, right. Um, that's it. And that's all folks. Um, also putting money into this race, a million dollars from the prison guards to Jackie Lacey. Despite all of that, Gascon still won. Again, Gascon's not perfect. He's a former cop. Uh, a lot of folks in the county that want to see justice for their family members who've died have said that they're trepidatious about supporting him to his face because of that. But he is pledging to open some cases back up against police officers. He's pledging to end the death penalty. He is certainly more so than Ms. Lacey, a forward-thinking uh, district attorney-elect. And it's very bizarre that the uh, mayor of San Francisco, London Breed, would come out and say that he's not a progressive and, and you know, try and try and make it so Lacey won. So, so keep an eye on Breed as well, folks. I think it's also worth noting that, uh, according to this article in the HuffPost, when Lacey conceded November 6th, one of the first things Gus Gunn did was to set up a public meeting with Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. something the group had been asking of Lacey for years. Uh, quote, what you have done in many ways, you have moved mountains, Gascon told the group. That is why you are the first group I have come to talk to because I do respect and honor what you have done. That yeah. is that is worth a fucking lot uh, yeah. in American politics today. I am extremely impressed by that. Yeah. So again, we'll see. But that's that's it. It's just a really great first note. And how often do you see that these days? Right. Uh Another thing that police lost, the losers, losers, <laughs> the losers. <laughs> Measure J uh, in LA County, funding for incarceration alternatives. So basically what rehabilitation should have been all a fucking long rehabilitation and not just punitive draconian measures against people. Um, and again, that was Measure J was one um, Measure J was a bunch of grassroots people who did not have a huge budget going up against a lot of money and overcoming it just with grassroots uh, knocking on doors, making calls, making texts, word of mouth. Um, we're able to to get over on large sums of money being paid by the opposition. Uh, yeah. And folks, we love to see it. And, and yeah, well, again, yeah. I mean, to drive home what you just said, this is Black Lives Matter with what, over seven years of building network out there. It is, I'm sure it's been helped by people going out and being fed up with um, what happened to George Floyd this summer. And, you know, you're going to turn on your CNN every day and you're going to hear these insider Dems saying that, uh, well, you know, uh, defund the police was a losing strategy. No, it fucking wasn't. 
This is these things like this are why things like this. Don't work. let them get away with that shit because you are about to hear a lot of that coming out of the mouths of moderate Dems now that they think that they don't have to like I don't know quote unquote pander to the left or whatever to get right. Biden in. You're gonna hear a lot of shit like that, and it is exactly that. It's shit. Yeah. So anyway, L.A. sheriff's deputies put three point five million dollars against this. Uh, Measure J is winning uh, when the story was published. It was winning by 14 points. Phenomenal. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's dope. City Council. This is a fun one. Uh, DSA also uh, supported Nithya Rahman um, over incumbent David Ryu. Uh, and she is so, you know, lefty, right? Uh, she ran on effectively a platform of decriminalizing crimes of poverty right? These crimes that you only do because you don't yeah. have money. You can't eat, right? Right. Um, you and- know, like, what are they, just to like, we've, we've covered this on the, on the show before, but they did some kind of a study as to like, what are the items that get stolen the most out of like grocery stores and, uh, and underserved areas. And it's always like diapers, diapers. And baby formula. And, right. and that is, and that's what people mean by crimes of poverty. Like, it's not people who are like, who, who are doing it because like they're bad or whatever. Right. They're doing it because they need things that they can't afford. They're not right. twirling their mustache. They exactly. just want a life for their children. <laughs> right. They need to feed their kids. So <laughs> I'm glad you like that. Yeah. <laughs> Raccoons. <laughs> and we're not dealing with snidely whiplash here. Yeah. Raccoons just like uh, case and houses over in... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, not like these fucking racks, man. Not those racks. So this Ryu guy, he was backed by Pelosi and Clinton. Like, just the shittiest <laughs> fucking Democrats. And he went down. You love he to see He went down it, to, to Ramen. And, and like I think that's just <laughs> deeply exciting. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest wins the left can point to this year. Um, another one, county supervisor for L.A. County. Holly Mitchell, I mean, if you work in the state house here in Sacramento, you probably know of her, you've probably met her. She's one of those really exciting, uh, sort of like Dr. Weber types that just stood for what she believed in kind of like without without even blinking. Um, turns out she's not gonna be up here anymore because she just won a seat as county supervisor. She ran on a campaign of no cash from cops. That was her pledge. Hell yeah. Love that. And Love she beat- a fellow Democrat, Herb Wesson, who took a whole lot of money from the cops, but that didn't fucking matter. Uh, and so again, another huge win. Can I also mention locally, the sack take the pledge thing, remember that? Mm-hmm. When like the, the Sacramento squad made up of a number of friends of the show uh, said, listen, we're not gonna take any money from cops here uh, in our races. So that includes, um, uh, who are the friends of the show that were on it? Uh, we've got, I mean, Katie, Katie my Consuela, my Vang, Tamika Lacluse, and Zima Creason, who we haven't had on the show yet, but uh, we'll find a time for her. Uh, but they, so the three of them who ran for office this year, all won. Obviously, Katie won before they did the pledge thing, but uh, Tamika and my both won, even though Didn't, they, Pastor Les signed this too, though. In fairness, right? He did. I'm, I'm just saying the founders of this, right, right, won, right, uh, which I think is very promising and, and good, and and should really it it tells you who they're going to be up there on the dais, uh, and yeah. that's really exciting to me. Um, so another one, assembly member. Okay, the these are the ones now. So not just the cops lost big. You losers. <laughs> also, get them, Dave. Prison guards. Tell them. You know who else are losers? Prison guards. Y'all Fuck losers. Guys. You lose the prison guards. Assembly member Reggie Jones Sawyer. I don't know if you remember, but the CCPOA, the prison guards, uh, they all came out with swagger this year. They're like, we're going to come out swinging against people who don't think that we should be doing our jobs, protecting people. And Reggie Jones Sawyer has been very strong on, you know, police reform and like that means fewer people in prisons and that to the prison guards means, oh, may, we might not have a job if we're not, uh, you know, keeping all these people locked up. Disgusting right. people. Um, so 
he was reelected despite the fact that they did an attack ad on him where they put a literal fucking crosshair over his face on a picture. Um, just like that's the kind of shit we're dealing with, right? It's it's they these people that wanna sort of rile up the chuds, you know? Um, and they lost. They they gave over a million dollars into that race and uh Junk Sawyer still won. So congrats there. And then uh one final one. Prisons guard, prison guards gave $2 million to get Prop 20 to pass. That was the tougher pr- <laughs> prison sentences, things yeah. like that. Hot damn. I didn't How did that work that out much. for him, Dave? Losers. <laughs> the, the losers. You, lo- you suckers and you losers. <laughs> all of you. So they- <laughs> Tell them. You tell them. The, and so, like, look at all these losses. I think the only race that uh either i think it was it it could have been the prison guards uh one was where a democrat actually that they backed beat a republican just because the republican went after their pension money so like okay now there's another democrat in the california legislature which to us obviously that means nothing because they're all shit right um so yeah uh so i mean i don't know i think that's once you lay that all out, it's kind of nice to look at that and be like, all right, what's the next step? Well, law enforcement fucked up this year, didn't they? They like, fucked up a they lot. They fucked up real fucking bad. And so now, like, like we got them in sack. I imagine they must have been like 19 of these stuffed in every person's inbo- or mailbox in LA every day uh, for months. But you get these like mailers where it's like, like we got the one where there's like a dude in like a, a ski mask and holding crowbar. a crowbar with somebody yeah. i want to say breaking into a house with a crowbar but that's not what this person in the picture is doing so i i feel like i can't he's um, just ruining but it's, their but door. it's always it's always they always put it into this context of like look man if if we if we lose even a dollar out of our budget it's gonna turn into like like a, the entire city will just be a giant crime scene uh, every window in your house will be broken out. People will be stealing, cl- like climbing through your window and taking your TV immediately. Um, and like, and that works, right? I mean, obviously Literally, that's, a tried, that's a tried and true law enforcement fucking tactic that has worked for them for decades. Yeah. With, with Measure um, J, uh, the sheriff of LA County, uh, Alex Villanueva, he warned Angelinos that if they oppose the effort, uh, no, he, he warned them to oppose Measure J, if you don't want your streets to look like a scene from Mad Max. Exactly, exactly. So that kind of shit, right? But the thing is, cops, that it's fucking hard. It's harder for you to sell that narrative if the people you're selling it to have been watching videos of you running over protesters, turning uh, turning peaceful protests into riots, shooting children in the face with uh, quote unquote non-lethal rounds or whatever, gassing people who are like gassing women and children who are being peaceful we've been watching you guys do this all summer long so now when you're like if you want peace and order in the streets you have to fund us it's a little harder for you to fucking sell that uh you can't really have that both ways if you guys are going to act like a bunch of fucking criminals well then you can't really bill yourselves as the answer the the solution to criminality as easily now can you you know how they can bill themselves as losers. 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 You fucking <laughs> loser <laughs> cops. You loser prison guards. And it's just going to keep coming. Uh, you know, when right now they're reeling and what you have to do is go at them hard. Make them drain all of their money and go at them harder now. So, you know, somebody posted the story about how the cops lost all of these races in L.A. County And then Kevin McCarty, uh, I think is an assembly member from here in our region, Sacramento. Yeah. He just quote tweeted and said, noted. Uh, And he has been a fantastic person on uh, police reform. Obviously not as hard as, as many of us abolitionists would like, but this is the stuff that will make McCarty look at something like, like these and say, all right, yeah, let's see, let's take a step further. Let's see what else we can find, right? Right. Um, So I'm really excited about that. What I would like to see this year, and I tweeted about this today, I wanna see somebody 
proposed legislation on transparency in prisons. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We have police cams now in California, and that's really exciting. We now have records of policeman misconduct. That is very much a step forward. We have nothing on prison guards, and we have nothing on the vile, the vile things they are doing and the way they are treating people behind those doors. Really, at the end of the day, I just want them to lose their jobs and find work where they're not fucking torturing people. Right. Um, but for now, a great step forward, especially for us journalists, is work that would allow us to find records on their misconduct, to be able to see what they're doing to folks. Let's say maybe you have to wear a body cam while you are on the job at the prison. Uh, I think this would really be a good step forward in protecting Well, there's prisoners. cameras all over every single one of those prisons. We don't have access to that. We so don't, but I mean- there's let's a pass step a right law there. that gives us access to those. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and I think that would be a really good, important step forward, and something that you know says like, oh, if you magically lost the footage, like, no, now you go to prison. Yes. We have to start. We have to keep them on their feet. We have to keep them moving backward. And the second thing, so uh, obviously, reach out to your uh, assembly member or senator on on things like this. Um, and uh, uh, of course, to continue defunding the police, get in contact with your local uh, people's budget. The last thing you can do is to keep the messaging going. Don't listen to the fucking idiot moderate Democrats. Defund the police works. Defund the police is a righteous effort and history will absolve it. Black Lives Just Matter- Just look at LA, it's already happening in LA. Exactly, Black Lives Matter was a thing that was super unpopular seven years ago. Look where we are today. Every yeah. professional football game, people are kneeling now. And like the, the owners of these associations are doing it too. You keep your feet on the gas and you do not listen to those fucking libs because this is working. We will defeat the cops. We will defeat the prison guards. You just keep moving. Absolutely. Dave, I gotta say, I mean, I don't want to like, I want to make too big of a deal out of this, but that was a perfect take. Mm. Um, it sounded like one to me, and I'm someone who spends a fair amount of time uh, combing through the dark corners of the internet uh, in search of all the perfect takes. And until you said that last little bit um, about the cops, I thought I'd heard every single one uh, but now I'm kind of second guessing that. And now I'm kind of going through my head and questioning things that I thought until now were true, which one of which was that I had already heard and read all the perfect takes that existed. But listening to you say that makes me feel like maybe there could be a cache, if you will, somewhere hidden away uh, that I don't know about. And, and if that's true, um, if it's not too much of a burden, I wonder if you would be willing to tell me uh, where uh, this uh, this legendary uh, cache of perfect takes may be hidden away. Yeah, and we should all have caches these caches these days. Um, <laughs> you know, for for when the chuds come. Mm. Um, my my cache is one not of oh, food God. or ammo or a cot. What's I'm no prepper, up? folks. My cache is one of perfect takes, and it's in a place called VoicesRiverCity.com. Um, obviously, we back in the day, we're doing news and arts coverage. Uh, we have the Sack Follows the Money Project, which whenever there's a serious election, we will continue to do that part. Uh, but mo mostly today, we are the podcast. Uh, although every now and again, you might get an essay. I'm publishing an essay uh, in the next day or two. Um, but... We've done 108 episodes now, right? That is well over 108 hours of just perfect takes. That's it's, incredible to think about. That's blowing my fucking mind. I'm thinking about case. it right now, and it is just blowing my mind out of my head. Yeah. yeah. I, wow. I guess I couldn't have said that yet. I'm better. loving to think about it. Yeah. I'm thinking I can't about think it right about now. it. My, my mind is just gone from my head now. So... <laughs> Uh, so I'm just going to try and power through here without a mind. 
Um, That's but, mostly uh, what I do on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, keep an eye on VoicesRiverCity.com. It, it's really the centerpiece of, of where all of our info goes, what we're about. Um, but we are in other spaces. You know, we're on Twitter at Voices River City. We're on Instagram at Voices River City. Skylar runs that and always does a little teaser clip that like, you never know where the fuck it's going to go. And it's always very fun. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are on Facebook, Voices River City. Uh, we're on Patreon. And uh, a reminder to folks, I guess not a reminder, uh, a little advertisement uh, and a heads up to folks. <laughs> Starting in December, we are going to go the classic podcast business model route, um, which is one free episode a week, one episode behind a paywall a week. So our Tuesday episode is free. Our Friday episode will be behind the wall. If you are already a patron, that doesn't matter. Hop on the Patreon and you'll be able to see or listen to our episode. Uh, if you're not yet and you just really want to have, uh, you know, two hours of us as opposed to one every week, uh, hop on there. Just it, It's just as low as five bucks a month. That's a beer at the bar we're not going to right now. It's a hot chocolate at the coffee shop you're not going to right now. Um, and it's only a month. So, I mean, like, it's this is the stuff that just keeps us going. Um, so uh, please do that. Um what else? We are on YouTube, of course. Uh, we're getting weirdly very popular on YouTube too. Uh, it's it's almost like our mine. faces, doy. We, I didn't. I, apparently, we're pretty attractive because <laughs> I think I don't think that's the only metric for why people succeed on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that's Skylar, the only metric. <laughs> that's the metric. All oh. right. Okay. Yeah, you guys are probably right. Who is the sweet summer child now? <laughs> uh, no, but we are, it's catching up. Uh, we almost have as many views on there on a given month lately as we do downloads. Um, and that's very fun to see. So uh, get onto the YouTube, flourish that blarsh button, harsh that morsh button. Oh my God. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, just keep updated on, on what we're doing there. Um, I personally... I'm on Twitter at you know Kempo Y O U K N O W K E M P A. You can find me at Guillotine for you. That's Guillotine, the number four Y O U. I'm the guy. I want to shout this out real quick. I'm the guy with the my avatar currently <laughs> is one yeah. uh, some, some amazing person. Amazing sent us me. a Photoshop uh, that they did of Daryl Steinberg with his with a crow hair and his face done up to look like the crow it's and so good. it immediately became my my twitter profile pick and i am extremely uh uh grateful to this person because it it, it tickled me pink i love we it. should amplify that image on our instagram yes absolutely yeah mm, i yeah uh just and, and like include their twitter handle because that was beautiful it's just I'm on some it. beautiful so well graphic design work uh, clearly, graphic design is your passion. Um, <laughs> Shannon, Shannon, who are you? Oh, I'm Shannon. Um, and <laughs> you can find me on the Twitter at Shan N D Stevens. And then and Flo yeah. is also on uh, as Flo Jean. That is F L O J A U, the letter N E. Flo, oh I God. hope. I know you love listening to the episodes when you're not on. So I hope we did you some justice there. Uh, and, and maybe on the next one, we can get down to really the, the root of why Skylar has been hanging out late at night in Denny's park. <laughs> well, oh, well, man. I, I think we could just forget that that part of the conversation <laughs> happened and move on. No, we there. definitely cannot. Uh, <laughs> we're going to bring that back up. So. At the very All least right. that can be a special episode. Well, uh, looks like it's about time for this episode to be over. So <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Um, before we've, we've been forgetting the sign off lately, I'm not going to do it this time. Folks, if you made it this far through the episode, we, we need you to know that we love you. We appreciate you. We want you to stay safe. We want you to stay sane. We need you to stay healthy. And I'm going to need you to stay the fuck away from me at least six to eight feet. Uh, there's a huge pandemic s uh, spike coming up. So thank you for, uh, just in advance. Mm, so nice. All right. 
We will see you in a few days. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh.